Here are eight additional paragraphs expanding on the story of the HAL Tejas MK2 2025-26 model with a focus on both deeper technical details and accessible layman-friendly language. In designing the Tejas MK2, the team at Hindustan Aeronautics Limited HAL, and the Aeronautical Development Agency ADA, pursued a significant frame size increase compared to earlier versions. The airframe is elongated and widened so it can carry more fuel and more weapons, which means longer missions and more versatility. For example, published data show a length of about 14.6 meters and a wingspan near 8.5 meters. That extra size might not seem dramatic in car terms, but in fighter jet terms it's meaningful. It boosts internal volume, gives better space for subsystems, more flexibility in payload arrangements and increases the margin for future growth or upgrades. The engine is one of the headline upgrades. Whereas the earlier Tejas versions used the GEF 404 GE in 20 engine, producing roughly 84 kilonewtons of thrust, the MK2 is slated to use the GEF 414 INS 6 engine generating around 98 kilonewtons of thrust. That jump in power translates into higher speed, faster climb rate, better acceleration, and more ability to carry heavier loads without compromising performance. In plain terms, the jet will be more nimble, quicker off the mark, and better at reaching the scene of action and staying there longer. When we talk about speed test, you might ask, how fast can it really go? Publicly available figures suggest a top speed around Mach 1.8, that is 1.8 times the speed of sound for MK2. While test bed and classified figures might vary, for the viewer you could say, if you were standing on the runway, you'd literally see this jet take off and in seconds be faster than any commercial airliner, and in a blink reach altitudes where the air is thin and horizons open. The battery charging analogy doesn't apply here since it uses jet fuel rather than an electric battery, but the equivalent idea is how long it can stay in the air mission endurance and how quickly it can get into the fight. On the system side, the cockpit and avionics have been modernized significantly. Reports indicate the MK2 will feature a large area display, a big screen, instead of many little gauges and switches, dual ergonomic joysticks, one for the stick and one for throttle, arranged for the pilot's ease and minimal movement, touchscreen controls, and a glass cockpit experience. In simpler words, it's like going from a dated dashboard with lots of knobs to a modern tablet and steering wheel interface. The pilot's workload is reduced, reactions are quicker, and situational awareness is much improved. Another major theme is stealth and survivability. The design uses many composite materials, radar-absorbing coatings, careful shaping to reduce radar cross-section, or RCS, and features such as canards, small winglets near the nose, and better intakes for airflow and signature control. For the non-engineer viewer, imagine you're playing hide-and-seek and you want to be harder to spot. That's what these features help the aircraft do in a hostile environment. It won't be invisible like some futuristic stealth plane, but it will be much harder to detect than older fighters of its generation. The weapon suite and mission roles are broader than ever. The MK-2 is slated to handle air-to-air -air missions, dogfights and long-range missile engagements, ground attack, precision bombs, standoff weapons, maritime strike, anti-ship missiles, and more. What this means, if you imagine previous fighters as being good at a few kinds of tasks, air defense or strike, the MK-2 is designed to do all of those tasks reasonably well. For the viewer, a multi-tool of the skies instead of a single purpose. Instrument. From the production and industrial side, the Tejas MK-2 is deeply tied to India's, Atmanirbar Bharat, self-reliant India defense ambition. It is estimated that initial indigenous content will be around 82% and rising toward 90% as engine manufacture and many subsystems become local. Furthermore, HAL is working with GE Aerospace on a joint program to manufacture F-414 engines in India under technology transfer. For the casual viewer, it's like the Made in India label, but for advanced fighter jets, meaning the country is building not just the jet but many of its guts at home which lowers dependence on foreign imports, simplifies maintenance and supports domestic industry. Finally, it's important to set realistic expectations on timing, cost and what this fighter is not. While the MK2 is a huge advancement, it is not a full stealth fifth generation twin engine super fighter. Instead it is described as a 4.5 generation multirole fighter, a major leap beyond the earlier Tejas but still within a certain performance and cost envelope.
The prototype is being assembled now. The rollout is expected around early 2026, and serial production may be by 2029 with induction into service sometime in the late 2020s. For the viewer, think of this as a powerful new sports sedan entering production soon. Not yet the hypercar of the skies, very good for its class but not the ultimate top tier in every dimension. If you like, I can pull together the latest cost estimates, expected unit price, comparison with competitors, and a side-by-side -side spec table with other fighters to help you frame the video review in full context. Would you like me to dig that up?